So uh, today I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, tactical organization, tactical unit organization. So I used the Marine Corps as an example because obviously I have the most experience with that. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can use these examples to also garner successful versus unsuccessful or good methods of organization versus bad. So I uh, put the, uh, the rule of three. Uh, so in the Marine Corps, um, we have what I call the rule of three, which is it's not really an accepted dot, I just, that's what I used to describe it. So um, when we're talking about um, the battalion level on down, or realistically you could even say the regimental level or the division level on down, um, the organization uh, of the tactical units is based on threes. The idea being that, um, that each individual person is only in charge of three people or three elements. So that way, um, the way to break it down, and I'll kind of write this out in a second, is that um, I don't think a lot of people would assume this, but there's no, uh, you know, the battalion commander isn't out there ordering fire teams where to go and telling this squad to go over and assault this and blah, blah, blah. That's not how good tactical leadership um, and how a good organization works. Okay, so talking about the rule of three actually broken down. So I'm going to go from the battalion level on down. You could realistically probably go from the regimental level on down as well. But this is kind of the, um, the typical uh, you know, breakdown of the organic forces that we use uh, in current times. So um, starting at the top, we've got the battalion above the company, above the platoon, above the squad. And then the lowest tactical element in the Marine Corps is the fire team. So... Um, here's where we start the rule of three. The Marine Corps fire team has four guys in it, all right? So listen right here. You have the leader, the fire team leader, saw gunner, the A gunner, and the rifleman. So if you look at that, the team leader has how many people underneath him? Three. He's got the saw gunner, the A gunner, and the rifleman. So the team leader's sole job is to place those three people and himself, obviously. So he doesn't control another fire team or other members of that, typically. I mean, it does happen during some tasks, but uh, from a general tactical realm, he controls three guys. That's it. Okay? So now, from the fire team, we move up to the squad. Okay? So squad in the Marine Corps has a squad leader, and you guessed it, three fire teams. So the squad leader, who does he control? He controls fire team leader one, two, and three. And that's it. So now, obviously, he can make adjustments um, you know, on the spot or, or certain things like that. But generally speaking, like when I was a squad leader, I go, hey, you know, Kelly, I need your squad over here, Thompson, you, or your, uh, I, Kelly, I need your team over here, Thompson, your team here, and Flaherty, your team over here. One, two, and three. So I control those three guys, and then they control those three guys. So that means I don't have to concern myself with my entire squad individually for every single movement that we're doing. So now we move from the squad to the platoon. So the platoon, you guessed it, has three squads, has a platoon sergeant and a platoon commander. So those two, they control the three squad leaders. So he would say, hey, you know, we had Grease, Thompson, and Matichik. He'd say, Grease, your squad needs to go blah, 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 Thompson here, Matichik, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't individually control my fire team leaders or my individual Marines, unless it's something that calls for it specifically. Uh, but generally speaking, when he briefs, he briefs me, then I brief my, uh, my fire team leaders. So we go up from the platoon to the company. So the company technically has four platoons, but weapons platoon, in a traditional role, their sections will each be split off and sent to each individual platoon. So you've got, uh, so you've got three regular rifle platoons, all right, and then you have the sections of machine gun, uh, sections of mortar, sections of, uh, of the assault men with the smalls uh, in the weapons platoon. So what you do is you send a section of each of those to each platoon. So then you end up with three reinforced platoons. That's what we'd call that. Okay, so um, then from the company level to the battalion level, you end up with the same basic thing. So you have three line companies that we would call it. In the Marine Corps, the designations depend on which battalion you're in. So for example, I was in 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines. So we have uh, India, uh, Kilo, and Lima Company. Um, now there is a weapons company within the battalion. But again, much like weapons platoon, in a traditional role, the weapons company is then split up and doled out each to uh, the individual line companies. Now, in the Global War on Terror, what it tends to be is what we call MAPs or CAT teams, mobile assault platoons, or combined anti-armor teams. Um, so basically, they tended to have mostly Humvees with their heavy weapons mounted on that, but each company would then have one CAT team or MAP team with them. And the same thing for the, the sniper elements, the state platoon within the battalion element. You send out a team to this company, a team to this company, and a team to this company. So that's how the rule of three works. And, and what it means is that we have a very high level of, uh, of individual flexibility um, and a very easy and very concrete 
um, chain of command. So, for example, if you are a rifleman, all right, in my squad, you have a team leader. So you have an issue or something, you tell your fire team leader, he tells me, I tell platoon, uh, you know, commander platoon sergeant tells the company, so on and so forth. So it makes everything very clear cut, very easy to control, um, and that's how organizations within military um, have to work to be successful. So now instead of concerning yourself with the individual this, the individual that, we stick to the rule of three. All right, so the battalion commander goes, hey, I need India company doing this, Lima company doing that, Kilo company doing that. And they go, okay, roger that, sir. And then the company commander is going to go, hey, uh, first platoon, you need to be here. Second platoon, you need to be here. Third platoon, you need to be here. They go, okay, roger that, sir. And the platoon goes, hey, you know, Greece, I want your squad here. Magic, I want your squad here. Thompson, I want your squad here. We go, okay, no problem. And I tell my guys, I'm like, hey, idiots, this is where the fuck we're going, and this is where we need to be. Okay, roger that. And they go, yeah, no problem. Tell their individual guys. Very simple, very succinct, um, uh, a very... Um, absolutely necessary uh, part of the small tactical level. All right, so remember, guys, uh, only the hits count, and you can never miss fast enough to catch back up. Throwing out some knowledge here, uh, just helping you guys understand the organization stuff a little bit. Uh, so please, you know, if you're watching, subscribe down below. Uh, you know, send us any you know questions or any ideas you might have in the comments, things to talk about. I try to get to some of them, but some of your ideas are really fucking dumb. If I'm being totally honest. All right, but remember, keep training, guys.